Ada video pasal Yusim, ada. Kenapa dia nak sambung master tak? Siapa nak sambung sama master? Jom Pak Indra. Kita buat collaboration sama master, student in the in online. Master student? Mm -mm. Saya nggak punya bu, master student. <laughs> kalau PhD student ada. Cuma kalau master student, di departemen saya tak ada. Adanya yang PhD student, oke okay lah kalau PhD student. PhD student saya semua lari, uh, Pak Hendra. Gimana, Bu? Ada berapa? Ada. PhD student saya lari, lari. Hilang, hilang. Kok bisa hilang? Ya mungkin karena corona, Bu, hilangnya. Tak, dia tak tahan dengan saya kok. Lah, Ibu jangan galak-galak, Bu. <laughs> ada lagi sekarang uh, visiting ada. Ramai orang datang. Ke ya. Unai. Bila Unai ramai. lagi nak buka? Ramai. Ramai, ramai bu, ramai, ya. Nanti my supervisor akan masuk lah. Saya akan, uh, saya akan skype dengan my supervisor. Iya. Uh, ujung bulan ni nanti saya sudah masuk. Yang Unai oh. punya tu, dah kota tu. Maybe nanti di plot di kelasnya itu next semester. Next semester boleh nanti yeah. saya cakap dengan dia. Sebab uh, saya cakap dengan dia besok petang, tapi dia kata dia sibuk. So dia yeah. kata minggu depan boleh kok. Nanti saya skype dengan dia sebab dia nak tahu pasal Unai yang semua. Dia sengaja hmm. je nak cakap dengan saya. <laughs> dia boleh je tengok dekat internet. Dia selalu macam tu. Sikit-sikit je dia akan Skype, Skype. <laughs> dia tanya khabar. Oh, nanya khabar. <laughs> Biasalah student dia kan. Ya, ya. Boleh start Pak Indra? Oh, sebentar, sebentar. Masih sedikit Bu. Sabar Bu. Oh, Okey. Ibu nggak 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 ngajak student ibu tau untuk join di sini bu? Saya juga lupa bu. Saya so dia join, tapi biasalah student saya selalu hilang kan? <laughs> <laughs> saya so student yang degree tau, degree tau bukan master PhD. Student yeah. degree je. Yeah. What, saya WhatsApp pun dia tak baca. Oh. Saya WhatsApp pun tak baca. Saya call pun dia tak angkat. <laughs> oh begitu ya bu. <laughs> student saya terus terus. Ya, bu. Coba bu, tolong tolong dicoba testing bu, yang uh, videonya bu, uh, uh, tolong di sharing bu, mungkin kita cek dulu okay. ini. Uh, kejap saya tengok share screen, uh, saya share screen ya. Eh? Yeah. Uh, nampak? Nampak bu. Okey, ni menerai Yusim. Nak tengok Yusim dulu uh, tak? Ya, uh, tolong Bu di 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 play Bu biar cek soundnya. Apakah jelas enggak soundnya? Hmm, tadi play okey aja. Nampak? Ah, nampak. Ini ada soundnya enggak, Bu? Ada sound. Ada bunyi, dengar bunyi. Sebentar, Bu. Gimana Mas Dimas atau Mas Ali? Ada enggak bunyi? Eh, uh, Bu, mungkin diaktifkan dulu share share sound Bu. Tak dengar bunyi eh? Ah, uh, tak di tak share di share screen-nya pilih yang anu, Bu. Anu apa? Oh, optimize ini sound ya. Optimize audio apa? Uh... Share share the sound gitu. Oh, share the sound ya. Bukan Nih, yang di situ, Bu. Dia. Yang di Zoom-nya, Bu. Yang di Zoom-nya, Bu. Bukan oh, yang di situ. Zoom, eh? Oh, Zoom ada sound, eh? Ada, 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 ada sharing, 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 sharing anunya. Co coba eh, stop share anu, dulu, Bu. Tolong di stop share lagi, Bu. Stop share, nanti saat share. Stop share? Nah, nanti ada, ada anu, pilihan. Share tinggal. screen, share sound. Oh, share sound. Nah, itu, yes. Bu. Oke, okay, share. Tengok aja, ya. Eh. Okay. Ah, udah keluar bu, sip bu, udah keluar. Sudah so, dengar, nak tengok ke? Ya bu. Nak tengok? C Coba okay. lagi bu, di play dulu. <laughs> ah, udah bu, bagus bu. <laughs> Sambil menunggu yang lain. Nah, berarti kalau dari 
tepat ibu I- ibu di Selangor bu ya ya ibu di Selangor ya tak negeri sembilan eh sorry ne- negeri sembilan ke Johor itu berapa berapa minit bu negeri sembilan uh, ke Johor tiga jam wih jauhnya bu saya dekat dengan KLA oh ya oh KLA yang berapa yang satu atau yang dua bu uh, KLA yang yang dekat Sepang KLA A dua, dua dengan satu oh, dekat. KLA A dua ya. Oh berarti ha. yang anunya uh, iPodnya yang punya yang Air Asia yang besar itu ya? Ha ha. Ah ya 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 paham paham saya paham. Saya suka dekat dekat dengan iPod. Saya oh. suka dengan bunyi kapal terbang. Iya <laughs> <laughs> iya iya. Ya. Nah ini okay, apa ini bu? Dah... Hah? Kampus ibu yang mana ini bu? Ini luas gini. Kampus ibu yang mana ini di, di foto ini? Uh, dekat sini, ujung ni. Sini oh. bawah belakang ni sangat. Eh, ini belakang semuanya ada. Terkeluar gambar, terkeluar gambar dapat eh. Di mana? <laughs> terkeluar gambar, terkeluar gambar. Belakang sekarang dia keluar kat sini. Terkeluar. Dekat sini nampak tak? Mouse. Dia terkeluar. Nampak, ni bulatan nampak. kan? Ma- mouse-nya nampak. Ha. nampak, nampak. Ni dia terkeluar. Terkeluar. Ha. Ha, tu fakulti oh. saya. Oh, begitu. Berapa hektar kira-kira, Bu? Luasnya usim, Bu? Kira-kira, Bu? Hmm. Tak tahu lah, Pak Hendra. Oh. Tak tahu. Tapi kalau jogging, penat lah. Ya, pasti penat, Bu. <laughs> Sangat luas, Bu. Kampus sih juga luas, Bu. Penat, Bu. Kalau keliling-keliling. <laughs> Naik kereta boleh lega. <laughs> Tapi sekarang student um, dah start banyak tau. So kalau nak parking kita akan berebut dengan student. Hmm. Dah start banyak lah. Ramai kan? Yeah. So kena datang awal juga. Okey ke Pak Endra nak start ke? Oh boleh boleh. boleh. Silakan Mas Dimas. Nanti ada MC nya Bu. Master of Ceremony. Oh okey. Okay, please okay. Uh, okay, thank you for the chance for me. Okay, because it's already 3 p.m., let's start our class for today. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon for all of you. Before I continue any further, please let me introduce myself first. My name is Christian Dimas Renggana, but you all can call me Dimas. For now, I will accompany you all for this class as master ceremony. Nice to meet you. Uh, first of all, I would like to welcome you all for to the information system guest lecture. Well, today we will discuss about machine learning and applications. Of course, okay. we will have an amazing speaker to guide us through the discussion. But for the, for the good of this event, before we start, let's take, let's take a time for pray for the successfulness of the event. Prayer start. There is no end for any prayer. First of all, first of all, we will hear a little welcome speech from the head of information system study programmi, Mr. Rimuljo Hendradri. For Mr. Hendra, time is yours. Thank you, Mr. Dimas. Good afternoon, everyone. Today, it is a privilege for us to have special guest lecturer who will present about machine learning and its applications. Thank you very much for the willingness of Dr. Waida to share uh, your knowledge and new insight in today's lecture. Hopefully, uh, what your knowledge sharing is very use- useful and helpful for all of, all of us. Let's see together the presentation of uh, knowledge sharing from Dr. Waida Ismail. Uh, thank you. Okay. I return back to MC. Okay, thank you very much for the welcome speech from Mr. Hendra. Next one, I would like to introduce our speaker for today's guest lecture, Prof. Waida Ismail. Hello, Prof. Waida. Can you hear me clearly, Prof? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Okay, we're very glad to have you for the class today. Thank you very much, Prof, for your time and effort. Um, for your information, Prof. Waida is an associate professor in Faculty Science and Technology in University Science Islam Malaysia, or you can call it USIM. She obtained her PhD in Information System and Computer from Brunel University, UK. Her first education in diploma 
in Computer Science and Master of Information Technology from University Technology Mara, Malaysia, 1994 and 2005. And her BSc, Computer Science in University of Liverpool, UK. The areas that she interested in artificial intelligence classification, heuristic search, and image processing. Her interest related to data analytical, machine learning, optimization, and IoT. She received a new funding from Malaysia government, Malaysia uh, Newton Fund, Unku Omar, and Yusim. Most of her most of her paper published in web WOS and Scopus indexes. She has 10 years experience as industry, and she has experience perform research with industry in Newton Fund, Unku Omar, and Perkeso Rehab Rehabilitation. For future information, please email her at waidah at usim.edu.my. That's a little information about our amazing speaker. Okay, I do think you guys can't wait any longer to hear the amazing class from Prof. Waidah, right? Then I will not make you become more curious about it. Please welcome Prof. Waidah Ismail. Prof. Waidah, time is yours. Okay, thank you for the very nice introduction. Uh, and thank you for inviting me, Pak Hendra. So today about the lectures is about the machine learning and applications. So this is the one same thing. I, I graduated uh, from my diploma in 1994. So I complete my, after I complete my UITM, my diploma, then I continue straight away to BSc Honours in Computer Science in UK. So after this, I'm working for 10 years, almost 11 years. At the same time, I do my part-time with my master. So during my working environment, I really want to be a lecturer. So actually, it's good that you have an uh, expose in industry then become a lecturer because you are more knowledgeable. So after that, after I complete my master, then I joined in USIM. So after I joined three years, they asked us to continue our PhD in information system computer in the Brunei UC. So if you can see the way I study, I always go back to the UK and UITM again. This is the when I'm in visiting UK. So I have 11 years in UC since 2005 until now, and this is my interest. Classification is what we call it, it's a machine learning. So what is artificial intelligence? Artificial intelligence is simulation of human intelligence processed by a machine. So there is a two different between the artificial intelligence and the natural intelligence. So natural intelligence displayed by human and animals, which involves of the consciousness or emotional. So the example of the artificial intelligence is simulation by human intelligence processed by machine. Okay, currently you are doing the online goal, is it? Online quiz. Is that true? So online quiz, when you go, when you do the quiz, you have a random question. Is that true? They are using, when you are using the random question, you're using the artificial intelligence features. But, uh, as a lecturer, they said that for the quiz, you have to go inside the quiz at this date, 10 June, around 3 p.m. Whoever did not go to that uh, to answer the quiz, you cannot answer it because it's been hard coded that there is, is a artificial intelligence and human intelligence. But suddenly, there is a one student did not come, did not answer it. So although they cannot log in, that's me, it is depends on the lecturers. That way we call it natural intelligence, whether they want to allow this student to go in or not. But if the machine, you say, no, you can't go in. You can't take any exam. But based on the natural intelligence by the human, that this student come in, I have a problem, I have internet problem. So this lecturer will set another question, especially for him. So you understand what is the difference between artificial intelligence and natural intelligence. Artificial intelligence, they are using a human intelligence, but there is no conscious and emotional. That means they only do whatever been asked to. So this is the timeline 
for the uh, artificial intelligence. So although the intelligent AI really born on the 1955 by John Carter that said the science and engineering of making the intelligence machine. So if you can see by 1966, they already come out a first electronic person using a mobile robot reason by own action, by their action. By 1997, they already developed the chess. Do you know the chess online? That means they already beat the world-class Gary Kasparov. But in 1999, there is a MIT Massachusetts already come up with emotional intelligence robots how the people feeling, how they want to de detect the people feeling by using the image processing. You know the image processing like me, I'm smiling, that's me, it shows that I'm happy. They already have the data. So in 1999, they already come up with a robot pet dog. So 2002, they come up with a vacuum cleaner. So currently the vacuum cleaner is so intelligent that understand which one is the dust and which one that you need to use a mop, water. So currently it's more intelligence. So in 2011, iPhone start using the voice interface. That's mean when you say hello, uh, they can translate it. For example, sometimes I'm driving, I want to say Ali, call Ali. They will go to Ali. Have you tried? So you should try. There is a voice recognition. So in the 2014, they come up with a chatbot. So you understand the chatbot is when you do a banking transaction or anything that you want to buy a uh, things, do you uh, that thing is there is an icon, do you need any help? So you answer all your queries. Then that means they will answer it. So there is a very smart chatbot. They understand what is the meaning. How are you? Are you okay? That's me. How are you? Are you okay? There is the same meaning. I'm okay. But the chatbot can answer, I'm okay. This is totally smart. In 2016, there is a one uh, hinting a robot. The name, name is Sophia the robot. It's very intelligent. You can see in the internet. There is a come up from the US, I think. They can have a feeling. I think there is a video of interview of Sophia. Sophia the robots. Okay, AI programming. So before AI programming is learning the process, focusing on the accurate data and creating the rules and turn how the data into the information. So you need to have the data. Then you have to create the rules to transfer it. Later, I will show you a few of the application that are already done using this uh, process. That's mean all the rules which are called algorithms. So currently you already learned about K and N. Is that true? Uh, decision tree, optimization. This is what we call it algorithm. From the data, you create the rules to come up with information. There is provide a competent device and step-by-step -step instruction how to complete a specific task. Okay, there is another AI programming reasoning process. Choose the right algorithm. You see the right algorithm, not the famous algorithm. So if you know now, people are going for a deep learning. Deep learning, but not everyone, uh, the deep learning, not every um, scenario can use the deep learning. Later, uh, currently the famous algorithm is genetic algorithm, but I test a genetic algorithm, but it's not suitable for my environment. So currently choose the right algorithm, not the famous algorithm, not that everyone is being used. Sometimes the scenario is not good enough. So self correctional or process. There is a, bit a designing or continue fine tune algorithm to ensure they provide a most accurate result. So for example, in this case, like a vacuum cleaner, they try to come up with, a, they are keep going enhancing to come up a very accurate result. So in the, when you have a speed recognition, even uh, when I did my study also, I tried a few like KNN, I need to upgrade between the hybrid aid combined between the two algorithms to make it an accurate result. 
So what is the AI technologies automation? So AI technology is automation tool that can expand a value and type to perform. Type to performs. So example of robotic, there is a robotic on the RPA process robot or process automation, a type of software that a repetition rule based processing and traditional done. So it's combined of machine learning and imaging of the AI tools. So in this example, uh, on the application side, if you want, you want to sell cookies, simple thing, cookies. You want to sell cookies at your friends in your university. So you can do it by yourself. You can say that the flour is around 200 gram, the sugar is around 50 gram. So you can do it by one person. Then suddenly your cookies come famous. So you want to expand your cookies to a uh, only at Surabaya. So Surabaya, you only can hire around five people. So when five people, the same ingredients, maybe the output is different. You know why? Because the first people say, oh, I measure is 200 gram, but actually it's 220 gram. So the texture of cookies will be, it's not uh, as good as you sell it. So after you want to expand it. So when you expand it to the whole Asian, you need a something like automation. That's mean there will be a robot or automation part can be, uh, it's not a robot, it's automation part can be done. For example, if you have a factory, you need to say to the automation that you have to put the flour is around 1000 gram. So if 1000 gram, how many sugars? It's 250 gram. This week is automatic will be done rather than human. If the human don't like you, they will put something else. That means your cookie will be selling. That means if you're using the automation part, you have a standard structure, texture, taste, everything. So that's why when you have a cookies, you want to sell a simple cookies, you need, uh, if you expand to, you need to someone to automate it. That's why machine learning can say that, oh, it's 100 gram of the flour. That's it, automatic machine learning can know it's 250 gram of sugar. What are they want to put? Nut, peanut, or chocolate chips? The machine learning will ask, hey, you have to do it can instruct the auto how to do the automation. <coughs> Another part is AI technology is a machine vision. The machine, the technology give a machine, a machine to ability to see. So machine vision capture and analyze the visual information using a camera, analog to digital conversion and digital signal processing. So it's often compared with I sign and the machine vision. So they use application on the digital signature until the medical image analysis. Later, I will discuss on the medical. So I did also that part. Computer vision focus on the machine based image processing. Okay, for example, here, um, usually when I wearing a spectacles. So sometimes I forgot to bring my spectacle, I want to look further. So usually I will use my handphone to take picture. You know, when you zoom in, when you zoom in, usually if you use a normal camera, the pixel will be blur. But with the high technology nowadays, they are using a machine learning, the picture recognition, they, the picture will not be blur. It's really, really nice. There is a one topic on the, there is one movie, it's an all movie, uh, by the signature identification, they use it for a fraud check. There is a real story that come up with a movie. I think, catch me if you can. You can go to Netflix and watch it. Uh, it's a Leonardo Caprio, who the actor. It's a very good movie. I think it's a winning award. So how did they defraud the signature in the chat? So they sign it. But last time, for the old version, they are using a, like a microscope to detect it. But currently, they are using a automation. That means they scan it 
all the signatures, all in the banking, they, uh, they scan all our signatures. Then when we sign, they are comparing the signature whether we are the correct or not. They will put as 99% classification is correct. So if you can see currently there is a, like it's not a promotion, like is if you go for a Korean, there is a recently a Korean sitcom named a startup. You can watch it in the Netflix. It's totally about the IT. About the IT, how they see, uh, they come, uh, how they using machine learning to detect a signature identification. So there is a few things that you can look into the internet about the movie or, already. So natural language processing, NLP, spam detection, and you can see that the text email sandam is a go for a junk. So if you have a Google mail, you can see that some of your email go to the junk. Is that true? Because they already learned about your email, that this email is actually is a junk. Junk email. So how they learn it? Based on the previous data. How they do a testing. That's why sometimes you can find your email totally as a junk. Although you do not put at the junk. They already learn it, they understand it. So NLP is a text translation, sentiment analysis, and speech recognition. So what is the text translation? If you can go to the Google Translate, Google Translate, they can translate it between English to Indonesian. You can go to the Google Translate. They are already smart enough. Speech recognition, if you can go sometime in the security part, and sometimes in the movie also you can speak. You do you aware that each of us have a different voice? Although I said hello, cannot say with other people. That's the reason why speech recognition is very good for the security. So that's why uh, how the speech recognition translate translate uh, transfer it to a data to to recognize. Sentiment analysis usually people are using a Twitter. Twitter, because one of my student, my final year project student, use a Twitter to analyze it, the COVID trend. So this is natural language processing. Another part is a robotic. So a field of engineering focus on the design and manufacturing robots. So robots often used to perform a task of difficult for human to perform it consistently. There is one thing, the cookies. Using a robots that you want to do some things. So robot is assembly line for the car production and also a large object. So if you can go for a Toyota, you can see all the robots is put under tires. You can Google it in the YouTube using a Toyota in Japan. And machine learning to build up a robot and can interact. So when I in Japan, do you know that uh, there are very technologies, the car parking. This means if you want to car, uh, if you want to park your car in the building, they will, you go inside and you will park which are the empty spot. They are totally smart. There is, um, I can relate it. There is one movie, I cannot remember the movie, already done that part. But when I go to Japan, I can see it. And Japan is really, really high technologies on this part. And also the robotic also, one of the company I went in Malaysia, they buy a robot to greet people in the hotel. That means they, sooner or later, people are replacing by the robot. They will say hello every time the uh, customer come in. And also in Malaysia during the COVID time, they using a robot to uh, like a chicken in the market, whatever we want to buy, the, uh, the robot will entertain us, to bring us. That's why it's like a reduce of human interact to bring our uh, food or anything using the robot nowadays. So actually robots is, uh, well, actually whatever, if you, actually if you are doing the computer science, 
actually is a very good prospect in future because everything they are need. So if you want to know that all machine learning is an AI, but AI, not AI is a machine learning. So all machine learning is AI because AI is the big one and behind is it is a machine learning. What else in the AI? Uh, optimization. What else? Image processing. Sometimes image processing, they're not using a multi, uh, machine learning because they are using a segmentation. Speech recognition, robotic. So ML is not belonging to AI, uh, <coughs> but AI is uh, under the ML. All machine learning is AI, but not AI is a machine learning. So AI state the science and engineering of making intelligent machine. The process of machine learning is a subset of AI that involves a piece of the software, train the software, and useful prediction of using the data. Machine learning. So what is machine learning? Machine learning algorithm build a model based on the sample data. What we call it is a training data. In order to make a prediction and decision without explicit the program to do. So machine learning focus on the development of computer program that can access data and use it to learn by themselves. So the process of learning, firstly, observation of the data. The data is really, really important. So example of direct experience, instruction in order to look pattern of the data. So what I did from my experience, I'm using a data and study the pattern of the data to make it a better decision in future. So when, uh, when I want to do research or anything, I will say, can I see the data? So from the data, I can analyze it. If I cannot see, if they say, oh, you can you analyze, you want to come up with the output, like prediction of the forecasting of the weather, whether tomorrow will be rain or not. I cannot say yes, because I need see to, to see the data, because the data, maybe I can look into the wind, whether it's uh, how the wind uh, travel from the north or for the south, and how the, the current data about the raining season. So I cannot say, yes, I can do it. I will say I need to see the data first, then whether I can analyze in it, whether the data is good enough to do the analysis or not. So the primary aim is to allow the computer learn automatically without the human intervention. Why machine learning is important to help the people human intervention, assistant adjust accordingly. So this the one, this the one uh, that training data, then you train using the algorithm, you come up with model and you come up with the algorithm. So you do a prediction and you evaluate it. So after you train the data, what happened if you come up with the real data? using the same algorithm, you can predict it. Because what? The prediction, when you run a training data, maybe it's 85%. But when you run an input data, maybe it's a 90%. That's mean the accuracy of the classification, the train data. So you need to have a previous data to predict a current data. Later, I will show you. What is the previous data? Why you need a previous data? What uh, that can input, uh, that can give a suggestion. So there is a three learning uh, type of machine learning, supervised learning. This is what I always did. Data set label, the pattern that can be detected and use a label of a new set. So this one, they already said this is mango. Apple and pear. Maybe they said mango is number three, apple is number two, man and pear is number one. <clears throat> so although you see that classification incorrectly, but actually when you come up with a result, maybe it's 85%. Why? Because when you did your algorithm, you said green is pear, but actually mango also can be a green. 
<coughs> because some of the data maybe the mango is a green so it's a supervised data although you said mango is a, a tree but when you run it it shows that the mango the mango is current is yellow but when you do the algorithm the mango is a the input is a green so it will come up it's not classified it's not correctly classification this is the reason not supervised is totally is 100 percent no because the data you not uh, you get in maybe the apple have to leave this means how the algorithm learn so unsupervised learning so unsupervised learning they have a label uh, label a similarity or differences so here they have a cone circle and cube so when the raw data this is algorithm you said that if the circle we go to here and with the cube can go here and the uh, cone this is unsupervised data because you did not give this uh, cone as a number one this is cone this is cube this is circle because unsupervised data you have a lot of data to come in uh, this two part later i will show you on the real application what we already did so reinforcement learning i never did this part i never tried and i did not know where to use it but from the internet or from the journal that i read there is a consider the data unlabeled but performing on the action and several action is something like you have a cat you train your cat to ring a bell bell you know bell so at this state cat is static select the algorithm the agent there is a bell when there is a bell you throw it the uh, the bell the cat will catch it catch it this is the best action that means the cat will catch the bell uh the bell then you give the cat reward there is analogies of the reinforcement learning so i cannot um there is no example of the application because i never done this is what i read in the um, internet the analogy of this environment so what is the data the data is a raw data is meaningless data this is the data this is the real data from my project so you can see that the data is uh, you do not know what are the value value if you got the data something if you working in the this is the data on the rehabilitation on the rehabilitation so you got the data you want to give to a medical doctor do you do you think medical doctor we understand it no so but because the medical doctor are very busy he cannot say what is this still time what is the moving time what is this mark what are the value what is this movement what is the movement time so you have to perform your data into the information this means the result of the processing raw data to reveal the meaning. So if you give the medical doctor this kind of graph, the medical doctor will know that hey, something wrong with this patient. Why? Which day? Why he's not doing any exercise? What's wrong with this part? Which day? Then the medical doctor will see the patient. Is there something wrong with you? Why you cannot improve it? because uh, this one is really nice they are improving and this one is improving so as a medical doctor because if you are dealing with a rehab patient with a stroke they need to someone to motivate something maybe uh, they came maybe the family members with them that's why the medical doctors need to know why uh, they did not perform anything maybe during that time he is uh, sick or don't want to play any game that is the reason so you from the data analytical you have to transform data to information information to knowledge and knowledge to a wisdom that's why wisdom is to give a suggestion or make it a very good so this is one of the application that I did in education. So this is my one of my final two years back, one of my final year project. 
doing during the learning session the student reaction and action in class can give an impact to the teachers the way deliver when the teaching session in monetary student behavior may give a feedback whether the teaching, se teaching session are positive or negative outcome heart rate measurement is unique and uncontrolled of any human being so it means each of us have a different heart rate so with the measurement research about the student activity classroom can be achieved and the purpose of the research learning student action monitoring are their heart rate so in this uh, final year project the student is doing all the students in the classes there is we, we selected around five students have to wearing a smart watch the smart watch will detect the heartbeat of the student later i can show you the output so what i mean the heart rate is a unique of the individual because for my heart rate is 85 is the benchmark but my student is 75 it's a benchmark. It's a bit lower. That's me. If I is 80, is considered sleepy. Can I classify that my student 75 as a sleepy? I can't. Because 75, they say 80 is above than 75. Maybe during that time, he is uh, excited. So what are the correct algorithm that can I, uh, can I perform? So this is the things that you have to select the correct algorithm, not the famous algorithm, the correct algorithm to give you a simple suggestion that uh, this student is very sleepy or wake up or excited. So towards the end of the classes also, and also we also can see that how the lecturer is teaching. Because the student sometimes is so sleepy. That's mean it shows that the teacher is quite boring because they did not understand. So this is the one, the data captured by from the sensor. So the sensor wearing 10 minutes to have a benchmark of the heart rate. So each of the five students that I asked them to, uh, to wear it, to know the benchmark. That's why I know that my student is 75. Some of them is 90. But average is 80 to 85, the heartbeat. So it's something, uh, but you have to take by individual, student have individual heart rate. So individual, a student have a different heartbeat. So the data will be performed on the classification. I did a very simple thing. I only do the decision tree. Why decision tree can define a map of reasoning process, describe the data set like a structure, Decision tree is particularly good to solve a classification problem. They have a node, branches, and leaf. The top, they call it is a node. So the tree always start the, uh, the node and grow into the split. So this is the leaf. This is the branches. Come up with two. Because of my project, it depends. Uh, what are the best algorithm? So respect. And the, at the end, they call it a terminal nodes. So the nodes is content of information and total number of record at the end of the nodes. So the typical decision tree is determine the condition. So if you need a condition, what are the best is the condition you want to give a suggestion. So decision tree. But you have to make sure that the data should be clean. If the data is not clean, you run a decision tree, you won't get an answer. So you need to do a cleaning part. So this one is a simple data. So it's the tree. So I group low from the benchmark is sleepy. Benchmark is a normal. The heart rate is excited. So you can see the graph. This is the graph when the student anxiety during the middle and towards the end. So excited. Why? Because towards the end, they are looking for another classes. You understand? So actually, in the in front of the classes, they are, this student is very boring. But why this thing? Because my students told me that the lecturer asked the question in the class. So that's why the student is wake up because of their heartbeat. 
you know because currently if i ask you to wear it i think most of you may be sleeping or maybe excited to know this little one so it shows that so we can advise the teachers oh you better ask the question so towards the end they are excited to go back have a lunch i think the 10 10 something they are looking for a breakfast and start excited so this is the one the student is excited why anxiety because there is a midterm test so you can see that in front maybe they can answer it but towards the end another 10 20 minutes around one hour nearly finish the question may be harder so maybe there there is a anxiety attack that's me whether they want to remember they want to know everything so so it's good that's mean if you have a band wash bank you can look at your wash bank which are the times that your heartbeat is really excited so you you are getting nervous middle until the end because maybe this is the time that maybe he cannot answer he cannot remember maybe in in front maybe it's in front it's objective maybe at the behind is a subjective that's mean it's an essay so the rise of heart rate may show the struggling. So the struggling or excited to finish the exam. So you can see that how the trend of the student heartbeat. So this one, the student is sleepy. That means it shows that uh, the lecture is might be boring. That means excited, maybe excited. Then it come up with a slowly down. Because it's maintained 20 minutes after the middle in learning, they, they are felt sleepy and normal and before slowing and getting towards the end of the session. You can see that it's a bit sleepy because if you see the time also during the lunch hour. So if you know that during the lunch hour, I think I've been a student before. So during the lunch hour, it's a bit sleepy and also in the morning. In the morning, maybe, and after 10 o'clock, it's a bit sleepy, especially if the class around 11 until 1 o'clock. This is the, how you, that's mean, the teacher, uh, the lecturers during that time have a uh, need to give uh, something, assignment or etc. to sharing. So it's a very good project. I think the heartbeat one, I continue into a medical project. Later, I show you during the COVID time. So this one also is sleepy because this is a final year project. They have a seminar. We have a seminar like you all have a guest lecture. We also have a seminar. So in the beginning of class, maybe they're excited and suddenly, oh, okay, sleepy. Maybe during that time, they are touching excited topic. Topic that excited, that give him, uh, oh, this is very good. This is a final year project. Oh, sorry. Uh, this is more on the final year project presentation. That's been during the presentation. This is the final year project. Uh, this is the seminar. Seminar, if you can see, they are excited in the beginning and at the end only. Because maybe the seminar is introduction, then at the end, they want to go back. So the character, maybe she is not feel interested with the topic of the seminar. So this is more of my project is related with a medical. So from here until the end is more touching on the medical part. I love medical. Actually, I think I already talked to Pak Hendra. I want to be a doctor. But during that time, there is no, my result is not too good to be a doctor. So at least I contribute as an IT in a medical, I want to be a doctor, but maybe my result during my, before I went to uni, my, in Malaysia, they have uh, CJ Pelajaran Malaysia, it's a high level before you go to university. So my result is not too good. So at least I got a PhD that contribute to a medical and I love to do a medical research because there is a lot of data, a lot of things that you can, uh, there is a lot of gap that you can study so if you are planning 
uh, continue your study in master or PhD, I think this is a good area that you can explore. I think uh, Unai also have a medical faculty. Maybe you can do a collaboration there with Unai. We have a medical faculty. This is what we did. So what I did is a tele monitoring to categorize is under tele healthcare. The, currently, because of we have around internet, we have a good internet. People are looking for other tele monitoring. That's when you are monitoring the patient from far, from distant assignment and information support people in need. Tele monitoring delivery. The sensor are low cost, reusable, portable, and can use at home. And advanced a wireless connectivity. You can monitoring during the COVID time in Malaysia. Uh, this is the one, temperature, oxygen, and heartbeat. You know, in the during the monitoring of the COVID. So in Malaysia, because our hospital currently is full, so a, so a lot of uh, patients need to do a self-quarantine to do a monitoring locally. So this can allow... Uh, that means if they trigger something, they can allow the patient COVID to get a treatment as soon as possible with a tele monitoring. So most of the patient COVID in low risk one or two, three will be monitored at home due to the hospital full. So uh, the patient is a low risk can be suddenly go to the high risk. So we need to monitor the temperature, the oxygen and the heartbeat. So there was, that's why they we, we wearing the watch also, same thing, because my research um, similar, they are wearing the watch and we are doing the tele monitoring. That's mean the data, the difference is the, the first one, the data will be collected manually. Uh, manually can extract the data because inside the smartwatch, there will be a chip to um, all the data will be kept. So same thing also in the, here also do you have a chip to capture the data, but the data need to transfer to the cloud. That means you need a wireless because how you want to collect the data, you cannot go to the a patient every day. The emergency will be happen around two or three days. And also they will come up with a low to the high risk. So what I did, did you, I did a, Simple uh, decision tree also. Decision tree rules. Because it's a simple algorithm, temperature more than 38, or oxygen or 95, or the heartbeat is uh, less than 40 and the more than 100. So you can know that um, decision tree because the data is a uh, simple things, all the data being kept. So this is the one. <coughs> When the temperature is 38, they capture every 20 minutes. 20 minutes, 20 minutes. Mm, there is something bug here. So, uh, the temperature is 38 and they will alert. They will alert the family members using the handphone. That means if 38 is a bit critical, that means the family members or uh, the hospital will get the alert that this patient is really critical. Although the oxygen level is really okay and the heartbeat is okay, but one of the COVID either one O, O and O. So this is what we did a uh, um, monitoring. We did not implement, uh, we randomly choose the patient. But if we give, uh, if we try to implement in large scale, we need a factory to produce the sensor. You know, because the sensor is customized to capture the temperature, oxygen level, and heart rate. Because currently, if you can see in the um, Lazada, you only have a uh, individual temperature different, oxygen level different, and heart rate is different. There is uh, a bit cheap, but how you want to collect the data? How you want to alert your family members? So uh, you only can monitor it yourself. So during the COVID time, you cannot go out from the room. It's a baby totally is being quarantined. So this is another part, research using the image processing, that one of the AI part, using a blood. 
So this project is automated detection and classification of the leukemia cells. So leukemia cells is a cancer cell. It's a top 10 cancer in Malaysia. This method I use is cellular automata optimization and machine learning. So I only touch these two algorithm. So you know that leukemia cell is a top 10 cancer. <clears throat> okay, if you see, this is a, in the can leukemia, there is a four type leukemia. One of them, I cannot remember, one is them is acute myelite leukemia, chronic myelite leukemia. Uh, I cannot remember like another two. But this type is a acute myelite leukemia. So acute myelite leukemia, there is a seven subtype. M0 until M7. But the data I got, this is a real blood. Real patient data. What I got is M1, M2, M3, M4. Can you see the shape different between the M1? But the critical part, M5, maybe they cannot help it. M1, M2 can be cured. But M3 is a critical part in between. So inside the M3, there is a rod, uh, they call it a blast. And inside the blast, there is a rod, something like line. You cannot, uh, sometimes you, they, this is rod outside. This is uh, the rod inside, I think, but this is more, the rod. This is a little bit. So you can see, if you want to see, you will have to see a microscope. Do you know that the medical doctors will look into this blood Manually. Because when I take the data, I experience it. That's why I love to do a medical research. Uh, sometimes I will go with my student to do it. This is the real data. So this is the one. Firstly, I'm using the OXU method. Also method is separating the foreground and the background using a grayscale thresholding. That's mean background, they have a cut off. That's mean this is white, this is black. Separating with two classes, foreground and background, potential target, background and foreground. Do you know that in the images, they have a RGB, red, uh, blue, RG, B, red, green, blue. So inside the red, they have a 1, 2, 2, 5, 5. Green, 1, 2, 2, 5, 5. Black, 1, 2, 2, 5, 5. The threshold, maybe the cut off at the 70. So whatever below 70 is a white. Whatever above 70 is a black. Also, it's a very famous method. They come out with, uh, I think, also is uh, from Japan. So we come out. So how, from the images, I convert it to the data. The raw data. So I'm using the fitness function to detect it, this cell. Because in the this cell, not only you have a leukemia cell, you have a plasma. You have a red blood cell. You also have a white blood cell. Do you know that what happened to leukemia cell? So I little bit explain. So every, uh, if I'm not mistaken, every three weeks, our white blood cell will be uh, vanished. They will be produced a new one. The leukemia cell happen when the white blood cell is uh, not being developed until the whole cycle. That's mean. Uh, that's why the the white blood cell is come up with a immune system. That is the reason. That's mean when you come up with a white uh, leukemia cell. That's mean there is a cycle. White blood cell. There is a three week cycle. So leukemia cell happen when it did not go into the three weeks. It stop at the producing or anything at the two weeks. So they did not 
come up with a new white blood cell. That's why the immune system of the leukemia people is very, very weak. This is how we come up with a leukemia part. So I did an optimization part to optimize the, to detect it and to optimize the cell, the detecting of the cell. So firstly, we all formulate the problem. We understand the problem. For my understand problem, to find the size and to circle the cell. So every in your project, if you are doing your final year project, you have to understand your problems. So second one, you have to model your problems using the mathematical models. So the third one, optimize your problem. I'm using the tree hill climbing, semantic annealing and genetic algorithm. And we tested decision making whether it's acceptable and we implement it. What are the best model? This is the one. You formulate it, you have a data, you model it, you optimize it, and you test. Then this one is being rotation. If not correct, you still can do it. Something like machine learning also, you still do it the training data, something like this. But this is using a fitness function you want to deploy in the optimization, then you implement it. So this is the mathematic algorithm. This is simple mathematic also. This is the number of circles. So that means if you can see that just now there is a two circle, number of circle. You accounted the black, the circle in the black, how many the circle in the black, and divide on the white. You have to divide plus one. If you did not put plus one, it will become infinite. So when plus one, that means if you calculate it, sum it, it's around 100, divide by one, the result is 100. If you make it, oh, why I want to put one is zero, but sometimes there is no data zero. Why is zero? So the result will come up infinite. That's why in computer science, they always say your mathematics should be strong. How you want to formulate it. So this is the one to detail it. Later, I will show you uh, by the end of result, research of the find the best fitness function. So I'm using the hill climbing. If you see, you are climbing the hill. You know, you're climbing the hill. When you come in the hill, then suddenly there is a low, low but he climbing still said this is the final one. Although you go low and you come back up, no. He climbing still mentioned that this is the one. That's why he climbing always start at the local optimum. He won't go to the upper. So he will take the best one, the best one, the best one. Also, I will say the lower. He will say, okay, stop. This is the one. So if you see here, this is the cell that I detected. It. And when I do the optimization, you can see this is smaller and this is bigger. The bigger. And also, I do it the simulated handling. So, in the handling, you can see the graph is something like here you know why they are based on the steel do you know still zara there is a steel um there is a zara inside based on the physics do you learn physics in during the school this is more on the physics so this is zara zara so there is you burn the fire when the, you burn the fire, the Zara will become bigger. When bigger, it will push upper. This means if you, something like this, it will push you upper, upper, upper. So you can see that the circle is better than hill climbing. Better. This means this is more bigger. This is a bit slightly smaller. So the next one, I'm using a genetic algorithm. Genetic algorithm uh, is a population using Dwight Mitchell, 1998. There is three types, selection, crossover, and mutation. So this is the 
S1 and S2 and cross over, you make it S4. So if you mutate it, it come up with a new chromosome. So you can see that autogenetic algorithm is very good solution in any of environment. Genetic algorithm is very famous, but it's not good in my uh, domain. You can see here. You can see how they started. They started from here and move here. Why they are using the coordinate? I'm using the coordinate. When the coordinate is crossed over, the coordinate will be moved. The circle will be moved around. For example, the coordinate is 60. Um, maybe this is 110. This is the original one. Maybe the coordinate is 60 and 10. But after I do a mutation, the coordinate will go to 120. Then the circle will be jumping other places. So back to the original one that I mentioned about the AI programming is not you have to find the best algorithm to solve your problem, not the famous algorithm. So then I using the neural network is one of the classification. They set the algorithm the underlying the relationship to set the data through the minutes and human brain operation. So a neural network. So in our brain, they have a neuron, the small, small neuron. The small, small neuron is being transferred the information. That's why whatever I speak in your brain is a working. That's why there is a, they call it snaps or snaps to transfer the information to your what you see. So they we, they have a million, 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 million uh, cell because that's why when you see it, something, the real environment come in. But when someone have a cell cancer or having a stroke, that's when their brain is not functionally properly. That's mean they, they will be a bit slow. That's mean uh, whatever in the Artificial intelligence and machine learning, they are simulate with a human body. So artificial network is maybe used on the prediction models, the adaptive control in the application that can be trained via a data set, self-learning resulting on the experience can occur on the networks. So this is the one. This is the weight. This means this is input data. The weight is make a decision to make it what are the best output. Do you know that deep learning is based on the neural network? The, because the deep learning, they have a few weight, the hidden layer. This means they are more particular finding a solution. But the neural network is something like this. So when I do a classification, how the data have been translated to a text? So I run a 15, I need a 50 attributes, mean, medium, variance, and low. I'm using a Weka application. I think you are using the Weka also. The data analysis software to implement a set of machine learning algorithm and using a test cross validation. So if you use a, ne a neural network, you need to have a, it's better to use a 10 cross validation. That's mean you have a 10 stack. That means the data will be in and out randomly. They will train the data. You know about the training the data? Same thing like uh, machine learning. Machine learning, everything is training the data. They will train the data and come up with what are the accuracy. Accuracy is 70%, 85%. Things is to do a classification to differentiate between A3 and others. So once I classify chain of A3, M3, with others, others is M5, M1, M2. So I omit the M3, I do another round of classification, and I did another round of classification. So this is the one, how I detect it. This using the OPSU. From here to here, I using a cellular automata. From here, they just detect it, the black color. 
and I square it to find the coordinate. You know, if you want to do the coordinate, you have to find the middle one. So you make it as a box, find a middle one. When I find the middle one, then I start the my optimization. Features. So this is a medical, this is the processing, my processing to doing the medical. And my student, I have a student also because I have a data. My student from here, they do a classification statement using a K-main. But the classification is not good as I am, my results. So this is the one. Then after I make it, I take it as a features extraction. You see why the rod inside here is very, very small. Okay. This is the one, how I translate it, the data into the text. Do you remember that just now I say RGB? Is it? So I translate it. Behind of it, there is a number. So I translate it to a mean, average red, average green, average blue, Average red, green, and blue. This is what in the Weka. This is using Weka. Have you tried using Weka? Weka application. This is supervised. You name it. This is from the class M1. So this is the average. All the data. So you transfer it to the text because you need a Weka to run it. Weka cannot capture images. So I'm using a multi-layer perceptron is one of the machine learning using a feed forward. This is the one. That why when I mentioned to you why I use a uh, supervised, but the result is 92.15 because some of the this data is not belonging to M1. Maybe some of the data is belonging to M2 or M3. You understand? Although you say, oh, I'm doing the supervised, should be 100%. No. Because of the data, because when supervised, there is a, a lot of data here. Something like coordinate. Here and here. Then suddenly, although this is M1, this is M2, and this is belonging M1, but this is outlines. It's not go here to the similarity in as a one group. That is the Reason you got it 92.15. Although this is the one that I tested. Although they have all is this is a machine learning in the Weka. I run it, but multi-layer perceptron is the best solution from my environment. So the conclusion is to detect the leukemia cell by using a new technique combination of the heuristic term as the matter classification on the using multi-layer perceptron. Why I did this? When the data go to the medical, it help medical uh, more easy. That's why in future, when I take the, M, uh, the images for a new patient, they know that this is M1. This is M2. Why? Because I already train the data. Train the data. Another project, this is the last one, uh, rehabilitation. That I got the project with a Newton and Kuma. There is a four participant, company Malaysia, company UK. So uh, university in Malaysia and university in UK. So when I did the project, usually I working with industry. When working industry, they need a product, the output. Okay, what I did in this project is visual using a visual reality using the exercise game to help the patient disability improvement of the movement. So exercise game setting is difficult, is a game difficult, important roles of rehabilitation outcome. So currently rehabilitations, they are using a manually, like a physical, like a muscle strength, jogging, treadmill. But now we are using with a technology, we want to use a visual reality. So they are 
exercise game accuracy of results to improve the patient improvement. So this is the three that we did using the machine learning. Suggested for physical improvement, recommended system, suggested automated suggested for the patient movement. And when we test it to a future, uh, it's around 90% uh, when we did an interview, is aligned whatever algorithm that we did. So this is the visual reality. We are using the Kinect. This is the game playing. The patient catch the game using the hip, hip eductions. This is what we call it elbow. This is a shoulder. This is the Kinect. The Kinect is from the UK part. Using a medical uh, interaction, medical interactive rehabilitation assistant. So this is the example of the game. This is the real patient. I went there to a rehab, one of the rehab center in Malaysia, playing the games, how they play the games. And mostly people are like, and they are improving. So this is the data. You see the data? You see the data, there is a moving time. Point. How distance, average uh, acceleration. And this is the exercise game. This is the movement type, movement. Shoulder, which side, left or right? Which is difficulty? This is the setting. Okay, if you are playing, if you are familiar with a Kinect and Wii, if you are video game, usually they have a default setting. You know, default setting. And default setting, some of the rehabilitation patient is not uh, suitable using a default setting. Why? Because they are the one, the rehabilitation, not everyone have a major stroke. Well, not everyone have a left injured, right injured. Not everyone have a feet, a uh, leg problem. So when we tested using a Myra, we have, uh, when we did a default setting, we have, we noticed that some of the patient did not improve. So we need to suggest to the physiotherapy, what are the best setting for this patient? So this is the, what we call it, the training data. Because we need to suggest that to a future, to help a physiotherapy. Because physiotherapy is very, very busy. They cannot entertain one patient with a one physiotherapy. So this is the one. They have a list of the patient, you know? The diagnosis may be stroke. Maybe TBI is uh, something like uh, to do with her uh, neuron, a brain injury. Something is a stroke. You need the weak side is right or left. It's not suitable. And this is all the movement. I make it as a table. If you give to medical doctor here, they won't understand. So make it a table easier to understand. And this the one, the movement and the date. This is the game. Okay, firstly, suggested to physiotherapy for a patient improvement. I'm using, uh, I think this is more on the decision tree because the data is quite clean. This is the one, if the C, C is hard. So if the C is hard, they want to increase to 20% and is a percentage of the prediction. So they will have to end times 2.05 times the height, 2.05 height, or uh, the same price and the same things. Okay, here is difficulty. Okay, this is the one. This patient is currently at the height level. The physiotherapy want to increase the percentage of 10% of all this data. That's the reason we have to times 0 0.25 times uh, the actual data. This is actual data. This is the actual data. The actual data. So what we did, because some of the physiotherapy rehabilitation, we have to check on the highest one. 
There's been issues that the patient can hit the highest movement. So after 10%, that's mean it will be increased. If they easy, he hit this one. If there is a distance, this one moving is hard, this part. So when I cross over, this is the setting, the physiotherapy do it last week. So this is currently they are playing. It shows that they meet, they, but did not meet a moving time because 0.5%. So from here, we know that the patient increased. Okay, we say that, okay, I want to see you 10%. Then your current, whatever you already play. So they predict it 10%, then they are increasing 10%. It shows that this patient is doing a progress. This why I'm doing a simple algorithm acquisition tree. This, but this algorithm, the model one, you have to come up yourself. If this B is a medium, this is N, the current one, you have to time 0 0.5. You want to see the improvement. This means it's 10%. How many percent? 10%, 20%, and 30%. This is the one. N is the percentage. If 10% is only one, 20%, they are double two. So currently, they are if it's 10%, it's double one only. So it shows that uh, the patient me okay this is the one one thing is a uh, good recommended system so you remember that i informed you about the default setting just now so how we want to use the default setting to match we train the data that's mean this is physio uh, patient come in patient playing one time because we need to know how the level so we can the next round the next week, the patient came in, we can say, this is your setting. Then we tested and the, uh, the patient is working. So recommended assistant is incorporate the most preference using the K-mean. We are using unsupervised because we did not know how many K. K is a, um, K is something like here, is it K? It's a cluster number of cluster we did not know number of cluster so we have to use unsupervised to know how many cluster being created with all the data so sometimes there is a outlines outliers of the data so we have to optimize it we are using the optimization using the bacteria fogging the optimization algorithm so most of the optimizing uh, algorithm using the scenario of the medical of the uh, nature so these are using e coli bacteria the the bacteria will find the nutrition that means they are working as a group group signal like you you want to go for a lunch you want to contact your friends this means is one make it a bigger then they are using the uh, there is a fogging decision using a two-factor chromatic and then another one in mimicking. So they are moving in the small step, finding the nutrition. Nutrition is defining what are the outliers and they move the outliers to the better came in, belonging to where. So this is the one they are suggested. So if you see the data just now, this is default setting. Tolerance, minimum, zero, maximum is 100. This is default setting. And the game is a medium. But from the data that we learn, we try to find a similarity of the patient. This is the one. Actually, this patient should be going easy. Tolerance is what a tolerance is 50 is that means the, the patient can do a 50% mistake. That means, for example, if you want to up your hand, something like this, uh, something like this, and the patient only can up something like this, half of it is being accepted. Because if 40%, you have to up it higher, but 20% is lower. So, maximum reach is a 100. So this is how you recommended the system. Recommended the system also if you use a Lazada. Do you know Lazada online shopping? 
and Shopee. You can see that if you buy a book or anything below that, they will suggest that to you. So how they train the data? This is how, what is a training the data from the past can future. That means Lazada, everything is using a recommended system. So another part, okay, after this patient have improved. So we need to know uh, how many people, how many, in, um, for example, that this patient already improved, that we want to know the patient improved on the muscle strength. We cannot use this setting forever. You know, we cannot use this setting forever. Forever. That's why if I want to know that the patient muscle strength, we have to change the setting. How you want to change the setting? This is the algorithm that I do. Automated suggested based on the patient movement. We are using the card. Card is one of the decision tree to predict the algorithm using the machine learning. Explain how the target value predict another value, decision tree that split predator at the end node. This is the example of the decision tree. This is the algorithm. They find the diagnosis, they find the movement, they find the diagnosis again, and this is the tolerance. So this is the setting, a new setting. If I want to get this patient target, you have to change this setting. You know, this setting is the not made. That means this patient should play with this setting until he meet the target score. So this is how we suggest the physiotherapy, how to improve from where? From a machine learning. So machine learning is very good on the prediction of the new uh, of the new patient data, train data. Remember that when there is, uh, I highlight the training data and the actual data come in here. There is one graph. So the actual data come here. So why are using uh, most, if you can see most of my algorithm are using a decision tree because it's a simplistic interpretation result or summarize or classification regression is usually simple. They allow a rapid classification with a new observation. Um, better is much because it's much simpler and to evaluate one of two logical. Usually a decision tree you're using as if and else. Can often result in simpler model and explain why the observation being classified and prediction that way. So for a business problem, they are much easier to explain if and else statement rather than complex algorithm. So uh, this is the advantage of the uh, regression tree or the decision tree, whatever tree inside. So perform a features, feature selection and variable screening is important part of analytical. When use a decision tree, the top few nodes, which is the tree is more important than the variable is set. So the result, when you do a selection tree is automatically and you don't have to do it again. That means uh, in my cases, in my cases, although they, I'm using a card, but you need to do it again because I'm using the optimization. Okay, for example, I have around 100 data. I around, I, uh, the data I have around 300, but only I use 100 data. When coming, the new patient is around 50 data, 50 will go to another trash. Not we remove it, we just put it aside because we need it to run for the optimization to a recommended system. So wherever a new data come in, 50 of it will go. If not, it will become slow. You know why? Because when you are using optimization features, it will take your computational time. So if you go in around 400, 500, sooner or later, your computer will be crashed. So that's why after we only keep 100 another things, we are moving to another site. We are partition our uh, data. 
So the advantage is this overfitting occurs when the tree take into account a lot of noise. That's why when you are doing the data the, uh, decision tree, you make sure that your data is clean. If you come up with a lot of noise, we come up with accurate data. With a small data also, you can't do it. We can be a very virus of predictions. So the low bias is very complex. We are low, has a low bias, a big bias. That means it's difficult to incorporate with a new data. That's why when I'm using the rehabilitation, I combine with the optimization and we have to, sometimes we need to run it. The run will be done by the physiotherapy. It's not automatic. Okay, this is the one I want to show you the video. My research video. I'm Associate Professor Dr. Waida Ismail. I'm a researcher, artificial intelligence in UCIN. My research background focusing on data analysis and medical research. I start my research in blood images and dental images. And now my research concentrates on disability rehabilitation patients caused by example of stroke, spinal cord injuries, traumatic brain, and others. Aligned with sensibility, the research focusing in remote monitoring patients' progressions, which is telerehabilitation and intelligent rehabilitation. The problem is where the patients have difficulties in sustaining the exercise from home and difficulties in driving to the rehab centers. Then need someone to help them in remotely traveling by using tele rehabilitation enables remote patients monitoring by the medical doctors from hospitals. In addition, the innovation also aligns with Malaysia initiate on green technologies reducing petrol. The data were collected in Perkeso Rehabilitation Malaysia for USIM to perform data analysis. As the integration NAKLI and NAKLI will make the patients comfortable performing at home with their maharam and reveal their aura with limitation. Myra is a virtual reality rehabilitation which benefits in improving motivation and bring excitement through the games. The exercise games in Myra are focused in both upper limb and lower limb, so it can be played by new various types of medical history such as stroke and spinal cord injury. Um, my role in the project is in using artificial intelligence, machine learning and optimization methods to design a um, personalized um, setup in the Myra platform. Myra is a platform that uses EXA games um, or virtual reality games for physical rehabilitation. They have some uh, initial setups, but what we try to do with machine learning is to design uh, personalized setups for each patient rather, rather than using general ones um, that apply to everyone. As you know, Myra Rehab can be used in all phases of the application. I'd like to share a few setting parameters that can be used to patient accordingly. Once you selected the exercise of recreation, you can go for the option more settings here to determine the movement tolerance and duration of the treatment for the patient. Okay, there is uh, one of the rice, uh, there is uh, one of the video that we sent it to our government that this is the niche of uh, USIM that I did the collaboration. So I did a collaboration with a UK and also a, with a company. Then um, it's really good, a very good expose. So do you want to see a using video? Is it okay? Okay, madam. Okay, this is one of the using niche. I think Pak Hendra is looking forward for using. <laughs> please, please optimize your, your uh, YouTube screen. Yeah? Uh, tolong dibesarkan ini, op optimize. Oh, optimize. Ah, okay, thank you, thank you. Uh, mana nak buat? Ini, Saya tak pandai ini, sangat lah. Nomor dua, nomor dua dari kanan. Nomor dua sini. Ah, tak, 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 tak. Kanan, kanan, kanan. Sini. Kanan. Ah, yes, right. Oh, okay. The Islamic Science University of Malaysia is the 12th public institution of higher learning based in the state of Negeri Sembilan, Malaysia. At USIM, we embrace the philosophy of integration of revealed and rational knowledge and virtues, which become the bedrock of an outstanding generation and knowledgeable society. The integration of revealed and rational knowledge, embedded in our 86 academic programs, rooted in our nine faculties' traditions, instilled in more than 12,000 students, 
and imparted across the globe by more than 22,000 of our alumni. Our research niche focuses on the social and economic well-being, through which we aim to improve the quality of life. We aim to become a global, high-impact Islamic institution by the year 2022 that is globally recognized and locally engaged with our stakeholders and society, by which we seek to find solutions to social, cultural, technological, and economic challenges. We commit to the perseverance of Muslim identity and virtues, underlying in the human sciences, building on five core values, valuing academic excellence, professionalism, and integrity. The integration of revealed and rational knowledge in human sciences at USIM emphasizes on five key areas health and social well-being, sustainability, diversity and inclusivity, cybersecurity and digital well-being, and knowledge for change. Our medicine and health scientists are steadfast in seeking the cure for cancers and drug addiction, neurological, cognitive and physiological challenges, seeking to find solutions to problems related to obesity, nutrition, and food biotechnology. Our scientists in dentistry also committed to gaining measures to improve dental and oral health. Our mental health and counseling clinics are devoted to helping students, staff, and communities facing challenges. Our sustainability agenda aims toward resilient communities. Manifested in our research and community initiatives, we combine revealed and rational knowledge with empirical studies and human capability to develop a balanced society and environment. Human sciences at USIM engage with diversity and inclusivity agenda, focusing on people with special needs, children, young people, elderlies, and minorities. Our scientists at the Center for Disability Research are highly committed to the knowledge development of people with special needs. Our philosophies on diversity and social inclusivity bolstered in research and community engagement relating to indigenous people. Research into communication, major languages, education and culture, religious harmony, and Islamic management. Our concerns for social well-being and justice manifested in our activities, organized by devoted academics, showing high interest in research areas related to peace, justice, conflict resolution, governance, and social well-being. From legal and Sharia perspectives, our concerns for socio-economic well-being, also inherent to the diversity and inclusivity agenda, aiming at eradicating poverty and improving quality of life. Human sciences at USIM also focus on cybersecurity and digital well-being. These initiatives, not only aiming at enhancing human interactions, personal and professional development, but also contribute to create a safe environment for teaching and learning, entertainment, and co-creation. Our research into big data, risk management, artificial intelligence, and the Internet of Things are paramount to the socio-economic well-being. Human sciences at USIM also committed to cultivating knowledge for change, working hand in hand. Our scientists, technologists, Islamic scholars, and industrial stakeholders aim at preparing students, academics, and the nation for change. These include the ways we respond to the pandemic, socio-economic, cultural, and technological challenges. This five key area is what we mean by integrating revealed and rational knowledge in human sciences. Together we aim to accomplish our goals in becoming the global high-impact Islamic institution by the year 2022. Okay, this one is uh, you seen. Aida. This the one is uh, you seen.
Welcome. Ahlan wa sahlan wa marhaban bikum to University Science Islam Malaysia. Hi. Warm greetings from me. I am Tariq. Follow me to explore the recent campus of Virtual. Isim is the 12th public university and the first Islamic university developed and established by the Malaysian government. Isim strives to spearhead every aspect of knowledge and becomes the global center of reference for the integration of revealed naqli and acquired aqli knowledge. Upon entering the main gates of the campus, an abstract sculpture with ikra writing and a beautiful garden square will definitely catch your attention. The Chancellery building has a prominent blue dome as its signature and is clearly visible upon entering Yusim's main gate. As the heart of the university's administration, this six-story building houses Yusim's main departments such as the Chancellery Department, the Department of Registrar, the Department of Bursary, Strategic Communication Centre and other administrative departments. Tuan Kumuhri's Islamic complex plays a significant role in invigorating Islamic religious activities and programs to keep the torch of Islam burning brightly on the campus and surrounding community. This complex is managed by the Islamic Centre. It is the centre for the campus community to perform ibadah and participate in various Islamic and spiritual programs. Yusim Library stores more than 100,000 reading collections ranging from various fields of studies such as social sciences, science and technology, medicine, law, education, religion, and many others. Students, academicians, and museum staff patronize the library for reference collections used for teaching and learning and as additional reading materials. This is the main hall where the university's annual convocation ceremony is held. The overall design of this hall is inspired by a mortarboard and a degree scroll. The entire design of this modern hall displays the value of Islamic architecture as a manifestation to the goal and mission of the university to become a center of progressive and advanced Islamic studies in science and technology. The Tunku Najah Sports Complex is a focal location for the campus community to participate in sports and leisure activities. It is home to various facilities for sports and recreational activities. The complex, which is supervised by UCM Sports Centre, has an internationally certified running track. Its main football field is a preferred venue for training and football matches from both local and international football teams. This building serves as a one-stop centre for students, where various activities involving student clubs and societies, campus activities, welfare, residential college matters and health treatments are all placed under the same roof. This building accommodates the Students Affairs Division, University Health Centre, Centre of Alumni and Career, Cultural Centre and the Student Housing Centre. The main lecture halls consist of four blocks of mega-sized lecture halls with an open coliseum-shaped amphitheater in the middle. These comfortable halls are equipped with state-of-the-art modern technology used for teaching and learning and organization of formal events, seminars, and workshops in campus. To produce more experts in economic and Islamic finance, Yusim has extended its academic scope with the inception of the Faculty of Economic and Mu'amalat in 2001. The five academic programs offered are based on Mu'amalat, Finance, Islamic Banking, Corporate Administration, and Accounting. Quranic and Sunnah studies are very crucial in Islam as it is the foundation in any Muslim's lifestyle. The Faculty of Quranic and Sunnah Studies offers Islamic studies courses with integrating modern knowledge such as multimedia and computer sciences for the students. The Faculty of Major Language Studies plays the role of producing graduates who are knowledgeable, skillful, and professional in language studies as to enable the students to study cultures, civilization, and knowledge intensely. 
The Faculty of Sharia and Law intends to produce graduates who are well equipped with relevant legal theories and practical knowledge in Sharia and civil laws. The Faculty of Leadership and Management bears the responsibility of ensuring that Islam-based studies are developed to meet the current thoughts and cultural knowledge for the sake of universal interests. Hence, all its courses are developed with the integration of Nathli and Atli knowledge. The Faculty of Science This is my faculty was established as an effort to produce more scientists and technologists in various critical fields towards developing Malaysia as a progressive Islamic country. The FKAB, which is short for Faculty of Engineering and Built Environment, is committed to produce ethical and professional engineers and architects based on characteristics of al Qawi and Amin. Tam Hidi Center is a foundation or pre university center that offers programs for SPM leavers with the purpose of preparing candidates to further their studies to the undergraduate level. Tam Hidi originates from the Arabic word which means preparation. Being an on campus school, Jimmy's Insan College provides secondary level education to bright students. Its academic modules, which are derived from Al Quran and Al Sunnah, are designed to produce excellent Islamic scientists and leaders. The Students Entrepreneurship Center is a one-stop business center where students can purchase their daily needs. The Commercial Center provides Jisim staff cooperation Jisim publishes bookstore and Jisim Alamiya, which handles international students. The Center for Sustainability and Serenity, or CU4SS for short, promotes the Green Campus Agenda and sustainable development to university members and the community. SK, which is short for Faculty of Medicine and Health Sciences, is a unique medical faculty because it is a field of study which will produce future doctors who are not only trained in medicine and surgery, but also have deeper knowledge of Islamic studies. The Faculty of Dentistry operates at Yusim Satellite Campus in Pandan Indah, Kuala Lumpur. The faculty plays its role in four major fields, which are dental education, patient care relating to oral health treatment, research, and services. Residential College 1 is the only on-campus accommodation for the students. Its facilities include a cafeteria, a hall, and a musalla for the residents. Moving forward, Yusim is determined to constantly develop strategies to become an excellent, referred, and respected Islamic Science University in various knowledge disciplines innovation as well as research at a regional and global level. Okay, that is about the USIM. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Do you uh, think it's a USIM a very nice building? <laughs> yes, very nice, very nice. Okay, Mr. Dimas, please uh, to continue the agenda. Okay, thank you very much for for Provida for the class mm -hmm. for today. Uh, maybe uh, if there anyone who have a question, maybe this uh, there is some open session for anyone who have question for you to ask to Provida. Feel free to ask anything to Provida. Maybe. Uh, uh, my question first. Firstly. Mm. Uh, okay, Doctor, uh, Doctor Roida, <laughs> yes. how uh, your decision to choose the appropriate algorithms to solve the problem is example in the Myra project? Oh, um, I look at the data. Mm. Firstly, when I look at the data, the data, and we notice that uh, we notice that firstly I look at the data. So we notice that 
each of the data, they have a different movement, different attributes. Different movement, different attributes, something like this. Let me show. This is the one. So different movement, they have a different attributes. Different movement, they have different attributes. So the data is a bit, um, so what we see after we collect all this data, we find out only five, there is maybe a similarity of the data. Five is already have all the attributes. You see, when you have a movement, something like this, they cannot play. Then the second one, if you can see here, I only display uh, five. This is all the five. They have all the attributes in any game. So the first one, based on the data, because the exercise game, we did not, we never see the exercise game. So the second one, we observe. We did the observation that from the observation, we find out that the patient have a difficulty to do the movement. Myra, data, the Myra is only exercise game. This is all we develop. I develop this part, me and my team. All this part, we develop it. This part, all we develop. And also this part, we develop it. Myra is only develop this part and capture the data and pass the data to us to analyze. So firstly, what I see is the data. What are the similarity of the data? And secondly, I see the observation why the patient is so struggle to do the movement. So from here, that's why firstly, we come up with the data we come up with the first solution to predict it because we find the five things, the five uh, the same attributes that uh, that can come across all the game and all the movement, only these five attributes. So this is the first algorithm we come up. That's why we come up with a decision tree, uh, just a simple, uh, just to make sure that how many times that this patient need to improve. Then after that, when we do observation, we find out that this setting need to be changed. This setting need to be changed. Because this is the default setting. Then we come up with the recommendation system. This is the recommendation system. So after a while, when we did our observation, we did, uh, then we can see the data improvement of the patient from the tabulate and the graph. Mm, from the graph and table. Then after that, we cannot use this recommendation forever. Because if that, if you do not change, that means the patient will use the tweet. It's only easy and with that. That's the reason we run the second one using the card. This is the one. To come up, if you want to improve the muscle, what score that you need? If you want to move that uh, particular, uh, the repetition, repetition, you know, that means the patient has to remove, uh, move correctly in one area. Then what are the best settings? So firstly, we come up with the data. So we try to predict the data, what are the improvement. Then we did the observation. The patient is not improved. 
Then after we need an observation, then we realize that the data is uh is not is uh the patient using the same data they are familiarized. But when doing the other exercise, they can't because they are used to it. So we how we want to upgrade it? We use the, the other part. That is a trick part. So uh, that is me and my team lah, do other suggestion from the data, from the observation. So back to the previous uh, item. Mm, this is the one. Mm, I think the second, I think there is a one part that I mentioned about the observation. Hmm. The data, I think something. This the one. Learn observation or the data. In order to find a pattern of the data. Firstly, we find the pattern of the data. Like I mentioned inside the Excel. How we find the data? We I asked my student to play all the game. All the movement. How you, we come up with this Excel? So the student, we play all the movement, all the game. So we then we realize it, hey, there is a five only similarity. So we start with the first algorithm. So the second part and the third part. So if you see that uh, the algorithm, hmm, the AI part, there is a tree. Learning process. Reasoning process and the correctness process. So in the learning process, based on the data, we come up with five and the algorithm. Choose the right algorithm because we realize that we when we did the second part, the first part is quite straightforward because we only use the five attributes. But the second part, we do not know the K, the cluster. So we need to develop the unsupervised to create the cluster. So when we develop the cluster, we just realized that there is a few things um, uh, left out. There is a few data is not being captured. So we all know that optimization is the best to capture it. So the this is the first one. And the third one, we try to find uh, fine tune uh, to make it a most accurate result. Actually, there is a one paper I want to show you what I mean is the most accurate. Mm -hmm. It's already, this one is accepted and will be published soon. What do you mean of the fine tune? Firstly, we only do this part. Data preparation and came in and the CF. And this is the output. Then second part, we try to make it better. Came in and K and N. And the third part, we come up with the whole process the hybrid process. You understand this is what we mean is fine tune. We test a little bit, little bit and make it bigger. Same thing like also my, this is the black one. When I did the genetic algorithm, it come up, the result is not good. And if I, how I want to come up with the optimization. So I develop one by one. Also, then Selulu Automata. This is how you find in your algorithm, make it better and better, better and better to get an accurate result. So actually, uh, when we come up oh, from my style, usually I do it with my familiar algorithm. I start with my familiarity of algorithm. That's why I'm familiar with a decision tree. I'm familiar with the optimization, simulated analyzing. That is the first step that I do. Then after that, 
I try to enhance it or try to, if I read another journal, then try to find a better solution. So usually when I start a first step, I do it that algorithm that I familiar. That's me for a student, whatever which are you familiar with. K-min, you do it at K-min. Although you think it's a simple, as long as you can give the output. Then after that, you enhance your K-min like uh, this part. I highlight the K-min and the decision tree, I think. Hmm. There is one part, K-min and decision tree. Hmm. In the rehab, I think. Hmm. So is you try the first step first. What are the, your familiar? What are your strengths on the algorithm? Okay. okay, this is Thank the application. You, so that means you are in the right track you, uh, learning machine learning. <laughs> Thank you. So Very is there any question? Is that okay for Indra? Okay, okay. Well, yeah, I answer the question. Huh. Yeah. Okay, is there any question from the student? Do you think that this is a very um, technical or is okay for you to accept it and you understand? For me, it's How about okay. Halim? Huh? Um, oh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, for me, it's very uh, detailed. It's step, step by step, you know, um, how to start. And what is the reason to do a certain algorithm? I think it's it's very detailed. Um, it's a little bit um, too much for me because you know <laughs> I try to capture one information at a time. But overall, it's very interesting. And thank you for the presentation. <laughs> yeah, it's quite detailed because it's quite uh, uh for me it's quite high tech of the algorithm. <laughs> Because I want to show you what are the algorithm can use, what are the output that can uh, give, that can benefit to a medical doctors. It's not, because when I study last time, I did, uh, I did my degree. In 1997, we already did, did uh, artificial intelligence. So when, uh, from my experience, when the lecture tried to explain it, I cannot imagine. <laughs> So I try to translate it to the application that you can imagine. So I know it's a very, uh, because uh, as a degree, I know that not all the algorithm that you will learn. I think maybe a K and N, uh, but when it's come for the output, this is the things, uh, how the uh, other algorithms that maybe you are not familiar with. I think a lot, most of the algorithm that I explain is you're not familiar with. But I want to relate what the application that, uh, what the algorithm can relate the output of the application that can benefit of the medical doctors and the other people. Uh, I understand that part. <laughs> but Hendra also inform me you are in the second year student. Is that you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So hopefully that when you learn the machine learning, uh, you can know that the benefit for others. So is there any question? I think uh, enough maybe. Uh... <laughs> yeah, it's more, almost around five o'clock in uh, yeah. <laughs> Indonesia. Thank you. Sorry for taking your time and explaining. It's okay. Okay, Mr. Dimas, tolong dipandu, Mas. Okay, thank you very much for provider for the mm -hmm. Answer of the question. Once more, I, as the representative of the information system student, would like to thanks to you because mm -hmm. you uh, already because you already give us some new insight and uh, new new uh, new example of the machine learning and applications. Thank you very much, Provider. Okay, uh, because we are already uh, in the end of this class. Maybe we, because we start this class with a pray, let's uh, end this class with, all, with also a pray. Can we start. take a photo? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay. Of course, after of pray, course. Uh, of course, after pray, we <laughs> will take a photo provider. Okay, okay, sure, sure. Okay. 
Okay, before we take a photo, let's uh, have some prayer first. Prayer start. There is no end for any prayer. Okay, well, before we end the class, let's have some, take, let's take some photo first. For all of the participants, let's uh, on cam your camera so we can take a photo. Maybe provider, uh, can you please stop share for a bit so okay. we can see the gallery. Okay, thank you. Okay, sure. Okay, for all participants, uh, please kindly to on cam your video so we can take a photo. Maybe Halim, uh, can you help me to take the photo? Yeah, sure. Okay, so... Okay, the first slide is not all. Okay, okay. Uh, for the first slide, three, two, one, and got it. Okay, okay. <laughs> Let's go to the second slide. Three, two, one, go. Okay, got it. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. That's okay, all bye. for our class. Thank you very much for Faida and thank you very much for all participants. See you next time. Okay, bye. Thank you very much. Okay, bye. Bye, Faida. Thank you. Yeah. Bye.